the psychological preparation for a feedback conversation is mm -hmm. really interesting. And I often am coaching people who are about to deliver what they think is a really tough message. And it's clear to me that they've been ruminating and pondering and thinking about the conversation. Yeah. And it's taken on this outsized importance when all they're really doing is trying to say to someone, hey, in the last few times you've done X, in the last few times you've presented to a large group, you've lost the audience a bit when you did X, Y, and Z, focus on the next time. Where does that psychological buildup happen that for the feedback provider, it takes on this outsized importance and therefore creates anxiety and right. nerves? So again, two, two things. One is I think we can all think about a moment, right, where we've gotten that feedback that didn't make us feel good and don't want to be on the other end. But I think the other piece speaks to a much broader cultural need for us, which is in order for direct real-time feedback to land and be productive and be effective, it needs to be given in a space where the culture supports it and where feedback is is happening consistently, right? If they only, if it only happens in these formal performance conversations, it's not going to feel good for anybody. Like if if we you and I were having feedback right now with lights and cameras, that would be terrifying for me. But if we were, you know, debriefing and having a conversation about, hey, how did that went, that go? And we've had a million conversations like that before. It's approachable on both sides, and it doesn't take away from the action or the impact of the message. It's interesting. One of the things I've thought about that's helped me grow in this area is that I'm not thinking about, are, is the receiver of the feedback going to feel good in the moment? Are they going to feel good a year from now? Right. Are they going to feel good two years from now? Because this conversation about development has put them on a different arc to a different place. I, I wonder if we could do some things that help people when they're thinking about, is this going to make the recipient feel good? Right. That the time frame gets a lot longer in that versus, are they going to hug me and smile at the end of the conversation? Because <laughs> in a lot of these, right. that's not going to be the outcome. Right. And I, that's such a great point, Dan, because it, you know, again, I think of moments and feedback that I've received that three, four, five years later, still live in my head. Those are the conversations that I want to have. And not a single one of them in the moment gave me butterflies and warm feelings. But they were messages that I needed to hear, and they remain actionable and productive for me now. And so I think to that point, when we're having direct real-time conversations, it doesn't mean that we can't apply them forward even in the moment, right? The reason that I'm giving you this feedback is because I see potential here. This is gonna help you grow in this way. Here's an opportunity I wanna set you up for and really even helping ourselves as feedback providers, but also the recipients see the bigger picture in the conversation we're having.